Hello and welcome. So in this playlist we will learn how to deploy any Python based application like uh, build via Django framework or Flask or Fast API or be anything in a production ready environment. So what I mean by production ready is like our application code should reside in a private subnet. Our there should be a proper segregation of various environments like QA, prod, staging, etc. We will do all of these things by the help of Terraform. We will create our whole infrastructure with the help of uh, IAC2 that is Terraform in our case. You can do so by the help of CloudFormation as well. Next is we have to make sure that our uh, load balancer resides in the public subnet and every other thing like database application code as i told you resides in the private subnet and we will make a bastion host to connect to the private subnet uh, instances we will containerize your application so that they can run on uh, in any cluster mode and for this we will use we can use any managed service but for now we are using aws ecs so ECS is an like an intermediate step while we go from EC2 based deployment that we traditionally do to a Kubernetes based deployment that we will do later on after the playlist. So this playlist will be a long playlist of around 10 videos and this is the first installment where we will be looking at uh, the architecture that we will build totally by Terraform and we will use Jenkins also to make the, our CI CD process. In the case of Django deployment, uh, there are already two videos on the channel that is uh, deploying Django or any Python based application by the help of Jenkins on traditional EC2 based uh, setup. Then there is, a, uh, there is a video to dockerize the Django with uh, Django and Postgres and in detail like how we make Docker Compose. So these two are already there and this third actually contains all of the a kind of a playlist that will have uh, 10 videos, HF 10 videos. Uh, for deploying the Django plus logish test the ELK and uh, logging setup so in a whole uh, how the system will look like is we will be having uh, a VPC individual uh, separate VPC and in that VPC uh, so let's say this is VPC for our QA environment so in QA environment we will have our uh, and this is public and here we will have our Django code our database here we will have load balancer we will have S3 and DynamoDB for state management of the Terraform. We will look in details of these things but for now we will have uh, DNS to interact with the load balancer then the request will go to the private subnet. We will have a bastion host in the public subnet and the bastion host will connect to the private subnet. So some sort of this type of arrangement we will have Jenkins also and uh, Jenkins will do the CI CD process. So, who is the correct audience even if you are totally new to aws uh, i will try to explain everything related to im roles the permissions etc in detail so that a beginner can understand but uh, you can look how to how a flask based or a django based application actually runs so it's not that difficult but to deploy them i will tell you in detail like how to use G, uh, gunicorn and nginx so we will be using GUNIC and, and Nginx for the deployment part. Uh, for database, we will be using uh, Postgres. And for uh, CICD, as I told you, we will be using Jenkins. For IAC, we will be using Terraform. And for uh, this DNS part, uh, we will be using the Route 53. And so these are some of the services. Now we will be using the main is the ECS. So ECS is a uh, containerized managed service provided by the uh, by AWS and there are two things one is Fargate based deployment and one is EC2 based deployment. So we will be using the EC2 based deployment. Why I am using EC2 because there is a lot of material already on the Fargate, uh, Fargate but nothing as such in EC2 case. So EC2 will be the good point of a start here. Another thing is EC2 we, we have to use auto scaling also here auto scaling plus load balance uh, these two combo will be used with ECS so we can see our instances up and down but because Fargate is managed server type of thing like uh, lambda jar so that 
uh, better is we go with the EC2 so that we can like I told you uh, with the uh, help of Bastion host we can go inside EC2 and see what all is going on and we will look all of these things in very detail so let's let's go deep dive into the architecture like how the architecture will be, uh, will look like at the end of the deployment series so initially we will start by creating a VPC so this is very important to understand that we will be having two things here one is your private VPC and one is your public VPC you can keep the size same let it be and here this is our uh, public subnet and this is our private subnet here in the private subnet we will keep our uh, database db and we will keep ECS uh, container and in ECS so let's say uh, whatever our Django code is so you can say our app will reside so we, let's say we have one and we will have one for proxy as well so this will be using Django and this will be using the Nginx internally okay then uh, this whole, whole system is actually in the ECS cluster this is ECS cluster the request uh, will go via load balancer here then we have uh, the connection between the private and public server we will manage route tables okay and here we will have in the public subnet we will have a load balancer a load balancer will be here and we will have a bastion host ec2 machine so this is the bastion host we can connect to our database by, uh, by the help of bastion host if i have to run some let's say psql query so i have to go with the bastion connect to the db and then internally i have to do this two things basically one is internet gateway So if a request have to go from our private subnet to outside world, it will go with the NAT gateway and a request from the prime, uh, from the public subnet will go via internet gateway. So in so this NAT gateway is for the outbound connection and this internet gateway, this can also be used for the inbound and outbound both. Inbound and outbound both connections can be in the internet gateway. So as you can see here, uh, the architecture will be uh, the main uh, point of understanding here is that we have to configure a load balancer we have to configure our ECS cluster so all of these things we will do by the help of Terraform you even internet gateway route table the subnets and this whole will lie in a VPC okay then uh, we will have other things like DNS management then uh, the ACM certificate, Amazon certificate manager. So these things will also be there. Then we have repos like ECR repo. How, where our this build Docker file will stay? They they will the build code will reside in Elastic Container Repository, and from here uh, we will deploy in the private server. So this will be private repo, obviously. So this is whole architecture. The other thing I left are Jenkins for CI/CD. Uh, the Terraform state management bucket, S3 bucket, etc. These things are there, but we will look uh, and we we'll go on. So these, this is the whole architecture. So in this video, we can see one thing that uh, first, if I have to start building this architecture, obviously we have to start by creating a VPC. Then we will go with creating the subnets. Plus, uh, we'll go with creating the route tables. Last, we will go with creating of internet gateway and net gateway. These things for the uh, network part. Then uh, we will start going into some EC2 instances and roles, etc. Because we have to go by deploying ECS there. Uh, by deploying application on the ECS, so ECS should have certain roles etc. so that it can communicate with the ECR. 
and even for connection uh, i mean let's say i am on my local machine and i am creating these resources so i need my local machines also require some sort of iam user with some roles for creating these resources so this is very important that we assign a new user to our machine for creating these resources later on you can have a server for creating this machine but i mean for creating these resources but for now we will have we will do it from local but you can replicate in the on the remote server as well or you can start from the remote server that's on you so this this whole thing we have to start by creating a iam user okay now let's talk about how our ecs and what all things will be there in ecs so in ecs we will have basically three containers one is your app container as i told you one is nginx container and one will be file bit container so i told you about these two nginx and django that is app container so basically this is our main application code this is our uh, reverse proxy server and this will be the part of elk cluster elastic search log station kibana cluster so that the logs of these two can be shipped to elk so how we will proceed actually is we will initially use cloudwatch so all the logs of this nginx will go to the cloudwatch and later on we will remove the cloudwatch obviously because it's, it's uh, costly also we will go with the file bit because that's a but and for that we have to do ec2 setup so the cost of this i mean this is also can be costly depending on the log size but uh, we have to set up this elk stack on the ec2 and file bit will publish our uh, will take our logs from the ec2 cluster and will push it to the log stash and we can graphically visualize this with the help of kibana so this uh, logging part we will also see as a part of this series so uh, internally what will happen is this app nginx and file bit we have to configure so we will write basically three docker files one docker file for our django application you can write it for flask also one docker file for our nginx and one docker file for our file bit so three docker files will be there and uh, this app will run with the help of geoicode this nginx is a server that will connect with i mean this that will forward request to the geoicon so if any static request will come it will go uh, directly by the nginx so we will do python manage to correct static command and otherwise geoicon will serve as a part of the api request the important thing to note is in our docker file we will keep its tabs like python uh, i mean running the unit test cases so python manage to be by test so your test cases will be there okay so and correct static these things will be there so this is the idea behind the series so in this video we have already seen how to install a jenkins on ec2 and how to deploy a basic django by the help of gunicon on ec2 then in this video we have seen how to dockerize the django and this this same concept we will use when we dockerize the django Uh, and deploy them on a managed containerized service like ECS. So if you're totally beginner uh, in this space, so this will be a good hands-on for the uh, any DevOps part. Like you will learn a lot about networking plus about uh, deploying anything on containerized managed service. So you will get to know about the basic container thing. And I will let you know about what the basic difference in the between the Kubernetes deployment and versus the ECS deployment. Like there are ports, there are replica sets, etc. But there we have task definitions that manage everything for us. That's why it is managed service. So uh, from we are going from EC2 based deployment to ECS based deployment for our Python application, and later on we'll jump to EKS deployment. That is more the raw Kubernetes part, uh, but little bit management by the help of AWS. So uh, please uh, have a look, and thank you so much for being here.